Then you shall have no treaty, no vaccine, and no Lieutenant Yard. So let's do this thing. Welcome to the Lark Book Podcast. This is episode 53 for the 10th of May 2017. Really, look at all the times you could actually ask to go and. What? Why? What? <laughs> Hello. I did that is... lie as well. Come on. No, you didn't. It didn't. It didn't mute nothing. <laughs> Light turned on because, because I don't think you're actually using Look, that. It turned on, and we can still hear you anyway. Well, episode, no, the light came on. <laughs> episode Bloody 50, lights. episode 53, 10th of May 2017. Uh, in today's show, we've oh. got <laughs> you're probably using the uh, you're probably using the other microphone. Thought of that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In today's show, we've got Maria Chiara Alessandro Oscar. They're from Live IT and Chaos League. How are you doing, everybody? Hi, How's things? Hi. Hi. Fantastic. Hi. This is probably the most people that we've had on as guests in one particular uh shot as it were. Uh, I'm your host, Stuart Edwards, and of course, down there is Luke Pitimus, Ogodimus Maximus. I don't know where the mute button is on my microphone. Well, at least it's not a hair gag. Well, just give, give it, give it time. Um, <laughs> okay, okay, right then. So let's let's start off. So hello to everybody. It's fantastic to see you all. Um, and now we're really going to test, you know, whether or not all this system works with many people. It says it can do many people. Let's find out. <laughs> okay. Um, so, who wants to kind of kick off? Let's let's talk a little bit about right. You've got uh, the Italian LARP Chamber Orchestra on Kickstarter, which is a fantastic title, uh, by the way. Uh, Luke and I, we wanted to get you know trombones and things like that and, and flutes uh, because it said Chamber Orchestra. Um, but tell us a little bit about the book. Who wants All to start? Right. Okay. <laughs> you don't I, need I, to I raise. Try. You don't need to raise your hand, but thank you very much for trying. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, I like uh, to think uh, about uh, Crescendo Giocoso as my declaration of love uh, to LARP. Okay. Uh, this uh, live action role playlist, as we like to call it. It's not just <laughs> it's not just the book which collect uh, me and my favorite Italian authors uh, scenarios. Okay. And it's and it's by Maria's uh, stunning graphics uh, and uh, Chiara excellent uh, translation. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, but um, it's the sum of my experience of the experiences by a community of players. Right. And now get get read around the website uh, live.it. Okay, yeah. Uh, and uh, each scenario has a, a very strong history uh, made by playtest and uh, discussions. Yeah. And a lot of uh, people and uh, memories are involved in this project. And we just want to engage as many others as possible. Uh, because I think the main strength of games towards a narrative. Yeah, uh, that is that is my grad other good passion is the uh, ability to establish a direct and close contact uh, between all uh, parties involved. Right. Okay. Um, so this this really is a, is a massive labor of love for you then in that respect. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so the the translation then is is it trans what what language is it translated or what languages is it translated into? Yeah, the original version of the book is in Italian. We're yeah. translating it uh, into English because we wanted to bring uh, Italian LARP out into the world. You know, there is not a lot of presence from Italian authors worldwide. So we wanted to give everyone a taste of what it's like to play LARP in Italy. Okay, right, no yeah. problem. Uh, excellent. Uh, and I'm assuming, just just show the thickness of that book again, just just for a moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
400 <laughs> pages. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that yeah. that must have just... that must have taken you an entire weekend to translate. No, no more than that. <laughs> We're working on it since like uh, October, I think. I started working on the book, yeah. and uh, they were already writing uh, it uh, for months before. Oh. Yeah. Good God. Yeah. But Oscar, you know, can you tell us how many LARP there are in the book? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. The, I'm the, helping. There are uh, twelve LARPs. Okay. Six by six by me and six uh, by other Italian authors. And because uh, uh, over the years uh, I had the pleasure of uh, contribute to keep alive the interest uh, for a chamber LARP in Italy. Okay. And now with this uh, Italian chamber orchestra, I would like to put uh, to good use uh, this experience uh, with uh, this book. Right. Okay. So what what sort of games are actually um, in the book then, uh, and and are and are they playable games or just your experiences? No, uh, there are all, um, there are uh, only games, only actual scenarios uh, that uh, anyone can play right here, right now. All right, so mm-hmm. so it is it is basically a book of of twelve LARPs that you can open yeah. up a page and go yeah. and go go today we're going to do this one. Uh, and, yeah, and yeah. they're that. written to be simple and they're written to be immediate so like you can open it and just uh, count your friends and say okay there's five of us this scenario is for five people let's right. start uh, reading it and uh, you can just do it without wow. with little preparation if you like or uh, there's a version of each larp which is um, more uh, scenographic like uh, we suggest background music and uh, lighting yeah. and that sort of thing to help you get in the mood if you want to yeah. but it's not necessary if it's you a... want go big you can but if yeah, you want to play good. easy you can just uh, give everyone a character and go so have, have you have you stuck with the normal genre of kind of Lord of the Rings style, or have you gone for murder mystery? Have you tried to diversify quite a lot and diversify? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah the, there's a fantasy LARP which is a, like classical Lord of the Rings style. There's a, a LARP which is set in a in an apartment building in Italy, just yeah. to get you the idea of uh, what it's like to live in Italy and uh, just the day-to-day life. Uh, and uh, there's all sorts of things in between. The first scenario I read was uh, by Oscar. It's called The Telltale Heart, and it's uh, inspired by Edgar Allan Poe. So, right. yeah, we have a wide range of stuff in it. Oh. And dare I ask, out of the 12, do you have a favourite? Oh, uh, <laughs> there's so many, like, I can't really decide. Uh, maybe, yeah, the first one I read, Telltale Hearts, uh, because uh, it uh, just blew my mind. I'm yeah, used okay. to another kind of LARP, more uh, blockbuster things uh, with uh, hundreds of players. And uh, Oscar was the first to introduce me to this drum. So, like, uh, he sent me the first file and I looked at it and said, wow, this is amazing, you know? Okay, okay. right. Yeah. That's really cool. You're hearing that obviously for the first yeah. time, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, did we just, did we just uh, warm my hands there off uh, Oscar's yeah, face. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there red. we go. <laughs> yeah. I've actually just blended in with a bit of a background you've got going on there as well. <laughs> So, um, so Alessandro, how, how, how did you kind of sort of uh, get involved with all of this? Um, and I'm, I'm assuming you're going to be talking about the new Atlantis blockbuster LARP as well. Is that correct? Am I getting this right? Yeah, yeah. I'm involved in, 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 in the, in the um, Crescendo Jocoso book since with another guy from Chaos League, which is my brother, actually. <laughs> we, we wrote a, a scenario for this, for this book. Okay. And so is is a. Uh, I know Oscar and Maria since not not so, so much time, not so long, yeah. But I, I found his own site on the internet, and I don't know why I I told that it was a very old man. Now I can tell you, Oscar. I don't know why, because of the name of the, I don't know, I say, oh, this, oh, okay. this kind of old name. man <laughs> is organizing a convention of Chamber Lab, a, a, a small festival in, in the north of Italy, not so far from my house. I go, okay, I go, and I go, and I discover that he's younger than me, first of all, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I, I wasn't in Chamber Lab scene. 
not at all because i <clears throat> the, the lab that I, that I organize are for more people with is, is a different kind of game is we can say blockbuster ish but it's not i don't know this term is you know it's very problematic sometimes but you know let's say like more 10 85 people something like that uh, that that can last four or five days with um, a relatively high budget. So it was not my uh, my cup of tea, but I was really, really interested in the fact that you can very easily go for a very deep game experience with, yeah. with no preparation, with, I don't know, two hours and two people in a room. It's for me, you know, I, I'm a very, um, I'm very passionate about tabletop uh, role playing. Yeah. Yeah. And so it, this format was, uh, for me, was very, very tabletop. And so sometimes I find that the chamber labs are a sort of very, of missing between LARP and tabletop. Okay. And of course, it's not exactly a link, but it's, it's a sort of, of limbo, and you can go in both sides. So it's a very hybrid uh, mean of communication. It is very interesting to me. So I, I, I go very fast and very, um, I enjoy the, this experience. And yeah. so we, we, we start a collaboration. So I go to Oscar and Maria convention. They go to my LARP and we done these things together. Okay. Um, right, spare me one second. Uh, so I, go on, yeah, do you want me to no, carry no, on? No, 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 yeah, 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 you, you, you carry on. Well, I was going to say that sounds really interesting because one of the things that um, when, when I've done art throughout the years, uh, I've never had the courage to try different things. I started with sword and sorcery, tabletop, um, you know, kind of the old Gary Gygax where, you know, you kind of go through the, uh, you know, kind of the, the, the mines and just kill everything that comes anyway, <laughs> anywhere near you. Um, but I felt that as a direct result, I kind of missed out on the diversity of what was was out there. And I think in the UK, one of the things that we are kind of guilty of is that we like a genre and we kind of stick with it. We're, we're you know, kind of very, not, not, not fiercely against it, but we kind of internally resist change. So it, it's kind of like, and, and unless you're kind of experienced, then you, you stay with what you know. And what really attracted me to this book was the fact that you've got 12 different stories of different genres. And, and, and just by having the book, you're going to naturally try all 12 different genres and, and these, these lovely, wonderful stories that you've got. I'd love to get a copy of this book, by the way, because uh, I think Stuart and I should actually do that two-man game. Um, and we're going to put it to practice and maybe film it and see how easy it really is uh, and whether it, you know, kind of whether the translation really works or not. Because I think we should just give it a go, you know, and, 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 and try it out. We'd love to do it. Right, you up for this, Stuart? Because anything that we do together, Luke, you know, always, is, always works out really well. Well, it never works out well, Stuart, which is why we should do it. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Is is my microphone any better now, Luke? Or is it still cracking? No, not no, really it's 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 cracking. cracking. Okay, I'm, I'm so glad that you're having the issues. I mean, yeah, fair enough. I can't <laughs> turn the mic off, right? But at least my mic works. You know? Right. Okay, just give me a second. I'm going to just pause things there for a moment, all right? While I just okay. sort out my mic, which means everybody so now. <laughs> Are we going to carry on talking or are yeah. you just going to come on? Yeah, well, that's fine. Yeah, but if, so, but if, no, no, no. But if you do carry on talking, bearing in mind that I'm refreshing my screen, <laughs> no one's going to hear anything. No one's going to hear it. Well, we've got to keep on talking. Well, whatever. I mean, refresh your screen, you give, me, give me a second. <laughs> still very crackly, Stu. Is it still very crackly? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Then there's nothing I can do about it because I've refreshed everything. <laughs> so okay, all right. And well, I, I was going to say so. Um, we've we've got the we've got the book which we need to see again. I think I don't think we've done enough advertising of that, have no, we? Exactly. Really? The <laughs> thickness of the book it feels right. So when are you planning on sending it over to the UK then? Uh, well, the Kickstarter ends uh, at the end of May, and after that, I think our delivery date is October. I think right. it's a, a late October for uh, for, October. Okay. For, for the Italian version. Okay, oh, so, right. uh, so yeah. it's not out over in Italy. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yo, no, 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 it's uh, not uh, out uh, in Italy. 
in the late October in Italy and uh, in the middle of uh, March uh, for uh, the international right. version. Okay. We are going to take it to the Knutepunk Festival in, the, in Sweden. So right. it, has to be, it has to be really fun. So it's if, got, if yeah. people want to find it then on Kickstarter, how do they actually find it? Uh, uh, sorry, Stuart, but uh, I, uh, it's very quick. I, um, yeah, I he, right. he was saying if they want to start it on Kickstarter, where can they find it? Uh, well, we have a link we can share with you. Yep. Yeah. Oh, you can search Crescendo Jocoso. Yeah, it's, uh, it's on the chat, the link yeah, right we'll now. That now. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll put that up on the website um, okay. so that people can uh, see that. Because it's a marvellous thing. And obviously, like you say, it's a bit of a labour of love, but it's really paying off. Um, and hopefully that will really go. So what next? I mean, you've written the book. You've done your 12 scenarios. Is there going to be a volume two, the revenge of the 12 <laughs> bot scenarios? Is it, what's going to be next? Yeah, we have a lot of uh, stretch goals right now because uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, guests out or from all over the world. And uh, we hope to can uh, uh, use uh, their... Uh, Availability to make a great uh, volume, second volume. Uh, right, okay. We have guys from uh, from Poland, from uh, America, from Brazil, uh, and also from uh, Sicily. That is always Italy, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, it's, it's, I'm sensing a theme here. You know, that's yeah, what, so yeah. I just thought I'd mention it. There's an Italian kind of undertone to everything you're doing. You know, like it's set in Italy, and you know, kind of there, there's a Sicilian kind of. Well, they say you don't ever mess with the Sicilian when death. Is is you know kind of Princess Bride is that what is it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And apparently, yeah, so I... if we manage to reach our stretch goal, the end goal is uh, to make a volume two right uh, away sure. after this, so with all the games uh, we're uh, getting from the other authors, to yeah, so yeah. we can turn it into an international chapter. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. An international best bestseller. Yeah. 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 Is that self proclaimed, or are you just going to make it, or are you just going to call it that? <laughs> international bestseller it's there it's all fine um, no 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 that's good i mean you know kind of I, I suppose are there any outlets where people can start to express interest in this because i suppose you're going to want to know aren't you whether people want to have a look at this is is there a uh um, yeah, it's, it's is, called is there a part of the website they can go on to to kind of it's called Kickstarter. Um, sorry, I don't think I quite got the with, question. Um, with some books, when before they pre-release, you can express interest in orders. Do you see what I mean? So if we've got listeners around the world yeah. that are saying, well, I'm not, I definitely want that book and, you know, I want to order it as soon as it comes out. Is there anywhere currently where they could do that? Okay. Um, mainly, no. At the moment, the book is available on Kickstarter only. Right, okay. okay. We are going to... Try to figure out if it's possible to have a distribution of some sort after the Kickstarter, but it's yeah, yeah. not yet sure. Okay. Because, you know, the Italian market is uh, very little about LARP, so we are trying to figure out if there is uh, any interest internationally. And uh, we just uh, founded the campaign yesterday, so now we think uh, it's possible. Yeah. No, but it's good because that's <laughs> oh no, that look really sad as if you were the only one at your own book uh, signing. Uh, party. Uh, I wanted to know that he gave us trumpets too, but we refused to play them. We got to the... <laughs> they, they let me down. Oh no, no that's no, 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 no. That's terrible. <laughs> and I mean, you're going to get your book. There you go. Everyone <laughs> oh, the, oh, the tambourine uh, and the whole thing uh, going on. Alessandro, my friend. And I think realistically, we should at least give this, uh, 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 you know, one go where you all do it simultaneously. You okay. count to three. You've yeah. got to do this. Don't leave okay. me on this. Okay. okay. Three, so three, the opening of the book. two, one. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you very much, Mike. <laughs> you are not alone. No, no. no. <laughs> you know, for a self campaign, you you have to do any kind of stuff. <laughs> it's it's nah. amazing what you'll do, isn't it? Really, for a little bit of advertising, even if that is, you know, kind of shaking your kids' tambourine. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, um, so we talked about the the scenarios. Are you going to diversify on the kind of content of the book as well? You know, or is it does it just just depend on the kind of feedback and the resources you get from people who decide they want to contribute? Are you going to take it to another stage? Are you you know kind of what what's next? What's what's volume two going to have? I'm excited uh, about volume one to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, for the for the booking itself, uh, we have just uh, one uh, stretch goals about uh, uh, UV varnishing uh, for the photos on the cover. Right. Uh, but uh, all the others uh, money uh, are needed for uh, other games. So Chiara can uh, translate uh, many many other games. We have twelve games right now. Uh, we can reach to to twenty. But yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right then. Okay. Well, and uh, also, uh, I'm just saying this now, but uh, on Kickstarter, there's a bonus game you can already download and try out if you want. It's a two-person game, so like, uh, if you want to see what uh, the what the games are gonna look like in the book proper, uh, you can go there. Okay. So, that's great. I always like to do that kind of thing. When it, is this a problem with the book, isn't it? You you can read it and it's it's very hit and miss with books, isn't it? Especially when they're yeah. someone else's scenario. If they don't quite get you or who you are or your background or, or what have you, they just don't get it. Um, and it makes it very, very difficult. So sometimes it's quite nice to have a little bit of a tester, isn't it? A bit of a taster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's agree. why we decided to give out uh, one game for free so you can just see what we're about. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. because, it's because this game is uh, already on a uh, play test. <laughs> Sorry, the dog. <laughs> Just a moment, the dog. Okay. That's brilliant, Alice. So, what are you two very close to each other then? But you just decided uh, to no, use two we, computers. Are you yes, both standing no, to the door? We can we cannot fit in three beds. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you could well, have you done it. You're two people. What happened? Why can't you, one of you squeeze in? You've got you and a dog. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but the dog wants to join uh, the conversation too. <laughs> oh, look at that! You, That's you, amazing. You could What's have name. You could have just moved dog. the computer further away. Does he does he LARP as well? Is he involved in the book? Does yeah. he make a special Actually. appearance? <laughs> Actually, in uh, some uh, LARPs, uh, Loki join uh, the the game. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> yeah. As what? A rookie. As a companion uh, and. Um, Millie, his job is to rescue people who fall uh, on the ground, uh, dying. Um, <laughs> he, it's a sort of stuff. He actually, he actually comes yeah. into the. Someone falls over and just, he yeah. just goes uh, over there to yeah. sniff at them and see if they're still alive. Yeah, so <laughs> he actually damage. He actually comes. Um, he, he actually <laughs> comes in. Pump your leg, love. I, I don't know why it's kind of like that. But, Luke. Uh, yeah, no, that, that sounds very cool. Luke, You've Luke. at least incorporated the entire family. That's absolutely marvellous. There's nobody hearing me now. <laughs> yes. We can't hear your um, <laughs> mic now, Stuart. <laughs> so he's gone completely now. It's just us, so we can do and say whatever. How about now? How about oh, now? No, damn, he's gone. <laughs> right. I'm hoping now that doesn't give echo, because yeah. I was so... hearing that we had we had echo on, 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 on the stream. I can't. No, you're still very crackly, old love. Yeah, well, crackly's better than not hearing me at all when I'm doing this. <laughs> and you're not hearing anything. I was saying that the dog, the dog is actually a big dire wolf in the LARPs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's marvellous. Um, right, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask Tom because Tom, Tom thought that the podcast was tomorrow. Just saying. Hi, hi, Tom. Uh, and apparently, <laughs> I I sound sexy to him, so uh, stuff it. That's fine. Um, <laughs> what? How did that happen? It's <laughs> modern technology of appearing in two rooms. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Wouldn't it be really freaky if he actually came past me and then appeared on someone else as well? You know, kind of, just all of us. And he started going, "Hang on, how did he do that?" You know, it's absolutely amazing. Damn, he's got transporter technology, right? Um, yeah, now that's a new story. <laughs> Now, uh, right. Let's 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 talk a little bit about um, the new Atlantis blockbuster LARP. Right. So, Alessandro, go. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so the Atlantis is, is a post-apocalyptic LARP. Uh, the setting is um, more in the 
style and the mood of the road than Mad Max. So it's more about loneliness and this world that hands and uh, leave this sort of uh, melancholic landscape in which humans are going a very lonely way around. Okay. And the, um, the problem is that the water is finished in our world. This is the setting. So we imagine uh, how our world can look like if water stops just from a day to another. Okay. So right. it means the the fall of civilization, of course, but yeah. how? I and and we ran this LARP in 2014 in Italian for Italian players, and after that we we rework the scenario, make it better and international, and we just finished the second run last week. It was for 80. 81 player, 82, something like that. I, I okay. can't remember exactly. And near Bologna, and we are this very, very astonishing location, I can say, because it's very, very huge valley that was all, all for us with some structure and um, a, a very, a very good and lonely uh, landscape, and. Um, the player were basically survival, but they were linked because they were in the same community before the world collapsed. Okay, this community was a web radio. We do, we 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 done a, an actual uh, web radio that goes online uh, like three weeks before the LARP, and this web radio were uh, made by, of course, um, organizer. But also players. So we we had this pre-game phase in which a player and organizer uh, set the mood together. Okay. So the the, the 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 radio has some breaking news every day, explaining the context. You know, there are situation is there, and and, and the situation go worse and worse again, and the, and every player uh, from the 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 hometown. Explain it what was going on. Okay, so in Amsterdam situation is like that. In Rome it's like that. In London like that. And it was cool because we had players from eleven country countries, and so everyone was speaking about some part of the world. So we have this picture of the entire Europe uh, going down and collapsing. And so we choose that because we need that. Players had a lot of potential, and someone people just gave up pre. Uh, set setting who is already close and sometimes it's fine but sometimes you can help you can have this help from the player and use this hive mind to to create a broader context which okay. is more 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 interesting and after that of course it was also a meaning uh, a mean to to get the player be in contact before the game so in the game, you use your pre-game relationship made on this web radio and forum and chat and stuff like that. And for 21 days, something or 15 days, I, I can remember exactly, people were on this on this website exchanging information and um, things about their own life. So maybe in game, I know that you lost your sister in this riot because the water was running out in your city. And you bring this relationship into the game. It was also a design tool to not have pre-written uh, character, but yeah. having relationship in game. So we, we, we tried that, and I think it, it, it worked. It works. But um, also, what can we? Okay, but it's, it, the, the LARP was four days long, okay. and uh, it was continuously in game uh, uh, from the beginning to the end, and it was. Physically demanding, not too much, but come in. No, but, but it, it was, was physically demanding. <laughs> okay. but, uh, because it was based on scarcity on food and water, of yeah, course. Yeah. And player had like half a liter per day of water to do okay. everything. You know, washing, uh, drinking. Yeah. Because water, of course, is, is a very important resource. So we need to, to, to use it wisely. And also, it goes for the food, of course. Um, and the, 
the focus of the game was about a community, this community of people or survivors that want to bring humanity um, again um, as, a, as, a, as a chance for the humanity. And, but everything, most everything, um, almost everything was in the hand of the player. You know, we done all the work before, but we put food, water and houses and every kind of stuff uh, in the hand of the player and say, go on, do your own community. If you want a dictatorship, you want a democracy, go. You just go with the, with, with, with the flow where the play, where the game goes. And, and of course, we had very different uh, outcome uh, depending on the first run and the second one and the second run, because of course you put 75 people and say, okay, do your new town and every kind of stuff can happen. And of course it was also a cultural clash because we had people from Italy, Finland, Germany, Russia, oh, and, okay. I don't know, and Germany and France and Switzerland. And, 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 and this was very, very interesting to see as a, large social cultural experiment in, in game because very very <clears throat> you saw the difference very much and yeah this this was more or less the, the okay game. okay um we i actually have a um, am i still crackly but am i am am i comp am i comprehensible can you actually understand what yeah. i'm saying right okay that's yeah. at, at least something um <laughs> Right, so we we have got a couple of questions uh, from the the Twitch uh, chat room. Um, yeah. So the first one is uh, from uh, a wonderful gentleman uh, in the UK called Thomas, who's supposed to be on the podcast with us right <laughs> now. Um, <laughs> Uh, so he asked, how is LARP in Italy different to, say, in the UK and elsewhere around Europe? Is it any different? Okay. I mean... Okay, how is it different in Italy than uh, in the rest of Europe? Okay, Oscar, it's your turn. <laughs> I choose you. <laughs> Alessandro is the traveler. I never played outside Italy, so... Oh, right. Well, okay. I just I... think that it's a complete bypass between three people. Of one person who was going to get the question to the other two people who volunteered the third and the fourth to actually answer it as well. Yeah. So if you could just amongst yourselves get back to us. And Thomas has got all day because he hasn't got the podcast. This yet, Italian so... bureaucracy, you know. Yeah. Bam, bam, bam. yeah. yeah. And, nice. and, and, and before we carry on. Hi, Rob. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> 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 I say, so, uh, I, I, of course, speaking about Italian LARP is, is a too broad subject, of course, because mm -hmm. a lot of organization, a lot of, of history, because yeah. um, uh, different tradition, even in the same country, of course, are there. Uh, I think now, as this Italian scene is going uh, to be more and more known in Europe, because but of course, it's just the two or three organizations because the yeah. majority. Because in Italian, we had we, in Italy we had just uh, until now just two international LARP. The first one is Black Friday. The second one is New Atlantis, and the third one Icarus uh, will be in November. So it's it's not a lot of game, and of course, it's more or less from the same people. And <laughs> right. because yeah, we have two or three organizations that 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 organize international LARP. It will be increasing, I, I think, but for now it's that. And after that, you have the, this, this book, which is very important, this Crescendo Giacomo, because it's uh, another way, very practical, very useful, because a book, you can read it and spread it all over the world easily than yeah. an actual art, of course. And is a very good way to display more than um, 12 Italian authors. Yeah, yeah. So I think this is, this is very important. And if Maybe the so I I I I don't this introduction to say that that I can explain how this international scene, which is very small in Italy, is different from 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 European scene. So I I cannot speak for of course for all the the, the, the Italian art community. I think that they for now if if we need to to list the list of the ingredients that are important in Italian art internationally um, speaking is. Um, focus on uh, immersion, 
I mean, what you see is what you get is very, very important. Yeah. Uh, so not too much meta techniques. Mm -hmm. There are many, but not, not so so common. And um, sometimes we we play. Uh, no, this is more chaos league. I don't want to put this for everyone, but the difference between character and players. Someone we 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 blur this line. Okay. And, right. and we need we we we. We think that this feedback sometimes it can very very it can improve the game. A lot. Uh, you know, if you want to have a thirsty character, maybe have a thirsty uh, player is can be interesting. Of course, you don't have to kill your people or put people in danger, but sometimes you need to 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 to, to be brave and not not strong, not hardcore, but just brave to say, okay, let's do that. Maybe it's not. Easy for me, you know. Oscar played the game. I think he hated the fact that, <laughs> yeah. that and, and that I survived. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, we <laughs> thirsty, Oscar. <laughs> yeah, he was thirsty. Yeah. He was very, very thirsty. thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah. and is 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 that right? Um, uh, Rude. Oh, here we go. Ruga Fred uh, in the Twitch chat room has said, uh, "Crescendo Gias." I'm Kiosk, that what Don't what you said, <laughs> yeah. What, what you said earlier. Um, uh, apparently, it has actually reached the goal today. Is that correct? There we yeah. go. Okay. Congratulations. I don't do yeah, but we still have stretch goal, so big people, yeah. big. <laughs> yeah. That's why we're playing trumpets. <laughs> yeah, we think, I, think you, I think you've completely missed a trick here. This is the time you need to get the tambourines and the uh, blowers out, surely. Yeah, <laughs> def yeah definitely. We this on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. I can help. Uh, oh, you can help. Yeah, well, yeah. Rob's constantly I drunk. Yeah, it's um, yeah. it's, uh, it's that, called being in IT. That bottle, that bottle was full at the beginning of the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll call a pizza to celebrate. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, yeah. Jimmy, what do you want to do? It's, it's very and, and I'll drink a delicious Pepsi. Other colas yeah. are available. <laughs> So I am I'm not so much yeah. for my son. So it's yeah. <laughs> 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 not so good. But for the Balkan you know. Although I have to say, I do think Rob won that one. <laughs> <laughs> Only how close is your booze to where you are now? Rob won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have no booze, we have no drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, a, and apparently Tom, who's supposed to be on the podcast, is celebrating with a nice cup of tea because he is very nice. <laughs> um, Good job. The other question, the other question that was asked, was asked again by Tom, um, was was what what is uh, a chamber LARP? What, uh, you know, what is it? It's a, a kind of slang, you know. Uh, yeah, we call it chamber lair because uh, you can actually play it uh, just with uh, in a room without uh, anything so special. Alessandro was speaking about uh, what you see, what you get uh, in yeah. chamber lair. Uh, this is not so important. I imagination uh, is uh, the most important thing. Uh, so you can play without costumes uh, if you want, uh, without uh, weapons or, or anything else. Uh, you, you, know, you of course can use all of this stuff, but it's not uh, so important. You can play also without it. And uh, so, uh, because we have a lot of game with different uh, genres, so we can have a fantasy book uh, or a sci-fi sh book uh, and so on. Uh, we pick uh, this uh, slang chamber, so we can be a chamber orchestra, and we can have this uh, aesthetic based on the, on the music. And also because we love the idea, love the idea that uh, uh, you can uh, just do a, a gem session for playing our games. So you take uh, whatever you want and just uh, begin to play with a lot of ideas. Okay, excellent. Um, and uh, Rudger, Rudger Fred again has actually sort of put up um, that he, uh, there's actually a a wiki on what chamber larp actually is uh so what i'll do is i'll, I'll grab that um and i'll actually put that in the show notes uh yeah. so people can actually look up what chamber larp actually is as well if they want to read up on it but but basically it does seem to be that 
you can just play this. Well, heck, you can play this on a small box uh, if there's enough room for a few people. Uh, there, you know, the, the, there you go. You, you can you can just basically play in in a very small space. You don't need lots of elaborate anything. Just uh, you, somebody else, or however many is needed for the LARP, and just rock and roll. So in your bedroom, should you want to. Not my bedroom, Luke. Yours, maybe. All right. Oh, why? You're no fun anymore, Stuart. Yeah, I know. But I, I kind of like the fact because um, I, I think sometimes I don't, I don't know about you, Stuart, but I mean, I um, it, it's almost as if I have become very dependent on having people setting a scene, um, and I think some of the the, the crazy uh, wonderfulness about LARPing is that it is in it is in your mind, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The character is yours to to pretend and be whatever you want to be. Um, and so I think sometimes, especially when you get, and you get that very much when you do tabletop, I don't know whether you agree, but because you are around a table in a room, then you are more likely to start to, you know, you don't have mood lighting as such, and you don't have props and people aren't fighting. And I think you really do have to have a very good imagination to um, to really get a gist of what's going on. And if you all start to play that game, you can converse and you can, you know, it, it can really be very tense sometimes as it is exhilarating, laughable, you know, kind of uh, and sad at the same time. Yeah. So I think to have a laugh that's actually there, that's very novel for me because I've never tried that. Never, ever tried yeah. it. And, and go on. Uh, I'm sorry, can I? Sorry. Mm. Uh, what I think uh, really is good about, the, <laughs> about this uh, chamber LARP is that it removes barriers because, uh, you know, yeah. when I was younger, I didn't have a lot of money. So you know, I thought, oh, I want to go to this LARP, but I don't have the money for the costume or uh, mm. the town is too far away and I can't uh, drive there or something. And uh, it uh, blocked me from going to a lot of fun yeah. things and uh, I had to miss those because of that. But while with Chamber LARP, it's just uh, you and friends and uh, whatever you have on and at the moment. And uh, that's really the only thing that matters. It's more essential in a way. It uh, allows everyone to play. You, you know, you need a budget normally to go to yeah, bigger sure. LARPs. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's a way to experience this without uh, investing so much money into it. And uh, I know it sounds uh, uh, mundane, but I think it's very important. Because it gets more people into the game. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. I think I think younger, especially young people. My daughter's got a very vivid imagination, and I think she's going to love this. But in fact, between you and I, and let's hope she's not watching this podcast, and it's just my <laughs> mom as normal. Um, but I reckon I'm going to get her this book for Christmas because I think it's going to be. A fabulous i think she'd love it she'd absolutely love it um because already she's starting to she she really loves laugh and i think somehow we've kind of created a monster because she's 10 and of course like in, in italy you know kind of although larp is a lot bigger in the uk she's the only one who understands larp in her school so of course she can't really talk about it to anyone else because they go freak um, and you know, kind of, and she feels a little bit left out. But I think she's going to love this book because sometimes she does go into her own little world, as we all do, uh, especially me because I'm in health and safety. Um, and you know, kind of, and 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 just be able to kind of continue the fun that she's having and go on these lovely adventures that you know, kind of, you've scripted. It sounds absolutely amazing, I have to say. Yeah, so you're gonna definitely. have to. I'm gonna have to get order my copy now. <laughs> get, 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 get you get the starter. Get your copies here. <laughs> and another thing that I love uh, very much uh, uh, of this uh, kind of book uh, is that any scenario is not only different uh, because of the theme uh, or the setting. Uh, of the lark, but because uh, ev everyone has different uh, meta techniques. Uh, um, uh, kind of um, tricks that help uh, the uh, people to um, enjoy the experience of playing. Um, mm. And every meta technique is really, really uh, bond with uh, the theme of the, of the LARP. Okay. So when you are playing uh, uh, the LARP about a con, the meta technique is completely different uh, than when you are playing uh, a more intimistic LARP about two people uh, in love. It's completely mm. different. Mm. I think we, 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 we need to add uh, to stress more the fact that Chamber Lab and 
other lab, you know, the, the, the lab, the long lab, let's say, lazy or disturbed, a, it, it, sometimes we need to, we, we, we tend to, to separate these two worlds. But I think there is a lot of things that chamber labs can do with long lab and vice versa, because, yeah. you know, lab, I am speaking lab, you know, a weekend long, um, we in a very cool location, sometimes the lab is imaginative. Because lab is about making uh, your imagination true. So let's go in a in a in a in a real hood or castle or island. Some, but if you go there and you turn up your imagination because you are really in the mood in in the in the in the, in the mm. location, you will kill your game anyway. Mm. Because it's not enough to having the real thing there. Yeah. Mm. And so you know this idea because. You know, every one of us go, goes in, in, in our career to a lab that sucked. Okay, mm -hmm. it happened, and 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 when it happened is because maybe organizer had a good location, had a good teams, a lot of very enthusiastic player, but sometimes go wrong anyway. Mm -hmm. I think in the majority of the case is this will of really make it real, even if it's already real. I don't know yeah. if I'm clear. Okay, so you need to have this value, extra value, mm -hmm. and these extra values in the in chamber labs are really on the top. It's very okay. visible. It's very there clear. Nothing so else. Can learn that from chamber lab, and chamber lab can learn from long lab. Um, is mm, I think mainly people <laughs> having more people because <laughs> it's very easy to, to, to. I find it very easy in my experience to bring people from Chaos League LARP to Life.it LARP, mm. which are chamber. They say, you love that? Can you imagine that you can have the same deep, deep experience in three hours and not in three days? And yeah. they are very thrilled by that, and they go. In time. So this is the, the link and the mutual assistance that these two um, aspect of LARP you can have. Yeah, so yeah. so so what you're saying is chain, chamber LARP then is the gateway drug to the bigger LARPs. That's that's where you're going with that. <laughs> yeah, and I suppose, how did you find that, uh, I mean, and obviously because LARP within Italy is, is really just emerging, if, that, if what you're saying is true, how did you find that the rest of Europe, so the Polish and the Swedes and all the other countries that came and, you know, experienced your LARP, how... How did they find it? Was it was it like a new experience for them? Did you, you know, because it's starting up for you and you have new ideas and you've got, you know, the your own ways of doing things, did you kind of find that it was a bit of a culture shock for them or did they, they you know, who taught who really? Or was it just a, a kind of just a, a great experience no matter what? I'm looking at all four of you now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I was, I'm just pointing at someone, but who is it? Yeah. <laughs> no, they can't answer the question. Uh, okay, I, you were asking whether there was some culture shock uh, when uh, we impacted with uh, the international mm. rock yes. community, yes. right? Yes. Okay. Well, well uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. yes, there was, uh, and I don't think. I mean, was that a positive experience or did they no, no, take it, it, No, no, it was a completely positive experience, yeah. but I was very surprised how, how it was clear that we came from different country. Yeah. It was very clear in how we act, how we react to mm -hmm. things, um, how we decide to solve a problem or focus on some kind of problem uh, part of the game uh, instead of other and um, okay. I don't know for, for me the when the game start uh, we arrive uh, one by one uh, in the location and um, at the arriving I was just crying all my tears because uh, I was uh, supposed to be uh, two months alone on the heart uh, the last survival. <laughs> And I saw uh, a bunch of people, and I was just, oh, I love you, I love you. And they were uh, just like, okay, <laughs> just calm down a little bit. You are upsetting us. 
What are you doing? <laughs> well, I suppose when you think about it, mm-hmm. if that were real, if that was yeah. scenario of the world running out of water were real, this is very much the culture shock you would get. Yeah. So I suppose yeah. really it's the perfect. fact that it was actually yeah, yeah. adding quite a lot of realism. Yeah. I mean, you were talking about immersion. Well, yeah, absolutely. And That's what you're going to get. It's also moving uh, to see how different people people from different countries yeah. in just a short amount of time, like four days, figure out a way to pull all the things together to make uh, the things work. It's yeah. very, from the first day to the last day, there was a growing of uh, bond and uh, community, let's say. So it was really, really interesting to experience. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it can sound like a stereotype, but we have a, a pizza scandal on the, <laughs> on the new on new Atlantis because we have uh, this uh, bunch of super nice guys from uh, Finland, and they uh, were on charge for the, for the kitchen, and yeah. they, they were uh, uh, rationing the, uh, the food all the time, so we can just have a little porridge for breakfast and then pro- porridge for lunch and for us italian it was a shock and we, we were starting a riot because yeah. we want a pizza we want a pasta <laughs> <laughs> and so on but, but the game was really about find, find a way to, yeah. to be together yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. And, and so everyone just find uh, a way to play in the right way in the tune of the of the game so it was a such an awesome experience uh, and we are uh, so glad to to play the new atlantis yeah, 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 yeah. this was the, the in game cultural shock but we had a, a, a real life game cultural yeah. shock that mm-hmm. we used to communicate and advertise our art in in a way that for us is are very is very familiar but it's not for everyone, of course. Yeah, so yeah. We, we worked a lot on that, speaking with the people, explaining what kind of, of game it was uh, and, and stuff like that. And it was hard for us because we organized since 25 years this year. And so in Italy, so people know us very well and they, and they know exactly what kind of LARP we do. We do. And this time, you know, someone coming from Moscow or Stockholm, you know, he don't have any clue of what kind of luck yeah, yeah. we do. And it was, we learn a lot. We learn a lot and we, and we are very happy that a lot of people from different countries in Europe take the chance because for them was a leap of faith. Yeah. You no, know, cool location, cool stuff, but... Wasn't it Christ well, that was saying, uh, Stuart, in one of our previous interviews that uh, we in, in Britain, you know, kind of don't see LARP as a bit of a holiday. We're happy to spend several hundred pounds going on holiday, but we're not as happy to go and spend several hundred pounds to go to a LARP, oh, yeah. which in itself is, 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 you know, kind of almost like a busman's holiday for us. And I think you're absolutely right. Um, I think if LARP is going to have that international feel, if we're going to get more people exposed to it, um, we need to offer more variety. Um, and although people probably would find it quite strange, I mean, I've gone to LARPs and, you know, first of all, it's not as if um, you, you feel uncomfortable. It's just not something you're usually doing, you know, and you can, it can, I can be very immersive. It can be very visual, um, you know, but then all of a sudden you do get used to it. And then actually the ones I've thought, you know, I'm not, I'm not convinced about this have actually been some of the best ones that I've been to. Um, and I think the last one was the Forest Argent, which was a kind of like a, um, uh, you know, kind of, a, um, you know, kind of a, 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 an East Asian kind of uh, a background, uh, Chinese culture. Um, and it was it was one thing that I'd never played before, but I had a fantastic time. I have yeah, to say, yeah, yeah. I had a really, really good time. And so I think uh, I'm my eyes are being opened now. And I think when I say about we in England, I really mean me, um, that I have been very blinkered when it came to uh, uh, LARPing because I've only ever seen Tolkien and that's all I could, uh, you know, kind of get my head around. But there's this wonderful variety out there. And I think we should try more. We should. We, we're going to come over. We're going to have to come over. <laughs> and come and have a go. At one of us. 
I mean, I know we've got Brexit and everything, but if you just see past that, <laughs> and then what we'll do is we'll just come over, but it will have to be over the border. You'll have to just bear with us a little bit because we're going to have to sort out our own country's problems first of all. Well, I um, mean, Luke, let's let's be honest. I mean, let's just go to Italy anyway. We, you like pizza. I like pizza. You know, yeah. you like pasta. Rob, Rob likes Please. pasta. You Rob know. likes pasta. And really, do you need water when we can have wine? Uh, no. it, well, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, and and even and even Tom can come, even though he's not well, on. No, no, Tom can actually twitch in because he never oh, comes. Right. Yeah, yeah, he <laughs> twitch in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, um, speaking on uh, about being uh, present yourself to an international audience, we yeah. we wrote the way in Italian love manifesto, and the aim of this manifesto was exactly that. That. Mm -hmm. So we are that way we love to play that way we are we have something in common with nordic life but of course it's not so nordic because you know also nordic is very controversial word yeah. mm -hmm. because as an italian des game designer i'm not nordic <laughs> geographically <laughs> culturally i know there is a lot of things that are very interesting and and was very important in develop the, the development of our, our mature art scene yeah but we need to add something that is different because we cannot just copy and we we, we cannot and we don't want so this yeah. is the idea and the, the manifesto at six point and is about if we sum up very briefly is about being take the chance to be brave brave you know it's not about you know be hardcore or be or be like a super uh, hero player it's yeah. just um took a chance to explore something different mm -hmm. even if you don't have all the information available or or maybe sometime you can be disappointed by mm -hmm. some experience in game because negative experience can have very positive outcomes in your real life yeah, yeah of course as a designer you need to you know you you cannot manipulate people because it's unfair you you don't you, you don't have to do that but player need to trust a little bit more organizer because i think we now seen our lark sinner is going um, to underestimate the power of trust okay we tend to over regulate Every any aspect of the game, mm -hmm. uh, know anything about the game, everything before the game starts, and we want like the very safe experience in all the kind. Safety mm -hmm. is very important, but if you put too much focus on safety, you will yeah. erase something that can be very very powerful in game. I know mm -hmm. we can mm -hmm. do a, a parallel with with travel. You know, you can yeah. travel very safely, and it's cool. And you go from I'll point A to point B in very quick and easy way, and see in highlights in this country. Mm -hmm. Or you can go maybe a little bit randomly. You yeah. you can be mugged or have yeah. bad experience, but but maybe you can re, you can see something real about the yeah. country you are visiting. And so making having the chance to make a little bit of this detour can be can be. In, in, interesting uh, someone criticized the manifest because of the point number one play and safely but i think it was a mistake about the what unsafe means because mm -hmm. i mean unsafe in this way having little mm -hmm. um, uh, peak yeah. of, of of i don't want to say bravery but curiosity extreme curiosity yeah, yeah. And, but you can be vulnerable though can't you and, and i think some yeah. of the some of the best uh, scenarios I've been on, we've lost um, as, as a party. We haven't succeeded in what we were meant to try and achieve. Um, and I think that just emphasises the point, really, that I think, you know, if you were to win every scenario and succeed in everything you were trying to, well, what's the point? Um, it is that struggle. And, you know, kind of sometimes those, those are the, um, and make for the best scenarios. And I, I dare to say that me and Stuart have trashed a fair few scenarios as well and change the storyline just because we were there um but yeah. that, that's good because i think if the story can actually cope with that and different characters coming in 
you know, kind of throwing their, you know, kind of part, uh, you know, and their their own little, you know, characters to it. Stories will change, and they'll go off in lots of different tangents. And yeah, that's yeah. what I love about it. You know, if you kind of start off with one thing and then just completely go off in a different direction, yeah. and the and the and the story and the gods can go with it. But, you know, they make the best. Make and the it, best lots. And in fact, Alessandro has gone off in a completely different direction and in a completely different room. Tell us about the toilet because we will need to know. Um, you know, if that, if that's where the best reception is. Yeah. <laughs> very things by new style of the story or new new groups or new places as well. Not just be. It's very easy to play the same lap, the same people many many times over. Yeah. Like I've been this with a couple of laps for a long time, but it's yeah. good to try a different group or try yeah. a different country or different style just to get a better feeling for things. Did you get that oh. feeling when you went over to Poland then, Rob? Oh yeah, it was, oh yeah, it, it felt really different, um, and it was a little bit intimidating, but it was also a lot of fun. But the one thing that I think made it really great though was that the lap community at that game in the lab community here both have the same thing in common is that the people are just so wonderfully social and friendly and, mm. and inclusive it, it makes it, it drag us in really quickly or at least drag me in i think it dragged us both in quite quickly actually well, yeah yeah and i have to I, say I, you know you, you no talk choice. about safety uh, you know kind of coming up different directions you know uh, whether it be safety of your character but i've always been more than happy to you know include my children in an awful lot of LARPs uh, as well. So the whole family does it. Um, and my little girl was there from six to eight months old. Yeah, and yeah. she was, you know, kind of um, uh, giving Stewie a hard time. Um, and, you know, and it is brilliant. They've been brought up with it. And I wanted them to because I wanted them to grow up with all the fond memories and have this wonderful, you know, kind of, um, you know, uh, sense of humour and, you know, this, this ability to be able to play different characters and just go in, you know, have an imagination, which I feel an awful lot of children do miss out on nowadays because everything's presented to them very visually, isn't it? You've got your PlayStation, there's a story, you move it around, you have to think about it. It's no, just that's all right, done yeah. for it's, you. It's, it is all done for you. I mean, my, my daughter's <laughs> introduction was at around about four years old. Uh, where we plonked her into a horror scenario. She was the creepy child at the end of the passageway, um, and uh, <laughs> which she thoroughly enjoyed because she had power over adults uh, yeah, in, yeah. In, in that respect, you know, um, over the grown-ups. The grown-ups, in fact, were terrified of her. Uh, I still so... am. <laughs> so, Something about it. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it, it, exactly. Um and I'm probably going to uh, get a, a call now from child support uh, agency yeah. uh, or what have you to, to ask about it. It's too late now. She's 24. All right. She can't do anything about it anymore. All right. <laughs> um, I think it's great. I mean, so do you find that you have quite a wide age range of people come to uh, your LARPs? I mean, you know, have you, have you, uh, is it just seems to be the same kind of age group as yourself? So probably what, 18 to kind of 35 ish you know or do you have older people come over or do you get okay. younger people, families uh, okay. or... usually we 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 got you know the the, the usual uh large public was from 20 to 40s yeah but now we we, we are going um, uh, we are growing as a community and mm -hmm. i i'm i'm very glad because the last LARP we done here in italy was uh, called uh, 6030. It was about uh, um, a small town uh, during the Black Plague time in, yeah. in, in the, the middle of Italy. And we, we really wanted to have a, 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 a huge variety of ages because yeah. the idea of this very uh, realistic village and the most, the, the, the younger was my child, was nine months old, mm. nine months old. And it was in my hand and yeah. in my wife. And the older was the um, was the grandfather who was like seventy four. Wow. So we had this uh, this yeah, incredible yeah. Um, thing, and we had someone between eleven and twelve, two or three guys. Yeah. And and it was very 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 mm -hmm. interesting to see how people react to to things. Of course. Uh, 
people, uh, uh, child love unsafe situation because they need to fear the monster. They need yeah, to fear. Yeah, yeah. And we are overprotected. But we need to do that as a parent, but they want, of course, the real thrill. And that, that this variety goal is going uh, more and more. Um, especially, I would say, people over 40. Mm -hmm. Because there are people that maybe used to laugh after they stopped because they were bored. And now different laugh, different style are going on. So they yeah. can, now they have maybe money and spare time mm -hmm. and they go back to laugh. This is I a think... very interesting phenomenon. Yeah, I think a lot of people did that. We've heard comments, both Stuart and I, where people have suggested that they've kind of almost grown out of it and that they didn't appeal to them anymore and they, they kind of couldn't see it and, you know, um, mm. they didn't feel comfortable playing those characters. And I could I could kind of see that to a certain degree. But I think we're, we're the losers if we, if we do think that because ultimately, um, like you say, it's so much more inclusive than it used to be and, you know, yeah. age doesn't really matter. In fact, actually, a broader... Mm spectrum of age within you know kind of uh, larping just yeah. enhances the whole experience because you get more of this immersion and i think uh the, the, you know kind of um the uh, an older generation as well as having you know kind of younger and even you know children as, as well can can just bring this whole experience to you know to life and of course kids are great because they react in the way that you want them to don't they you show them someone in a mask like Stuart. you are wearing a mask aren't you Stu? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, and he scares the living bejesus out of it. Well, pretty much everyone. But he did scare uh, my daughter when she was about three or four. And then he did the brilliant thing by taking the mask off and going, ah, and she was even worse. And I thought, my God, even not wearing a mask, he's actually physically scaring my daughter. Um, it doesn't do that anymore, by the way. It's just like... No, no, no. No, she just looks at me with the... Oh, she gives she gives you me you yeah. what Kate, your daughter, gave me once. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, when I sat the... there, I went, "Can you just do that, Kate?" And she went, "Yeah." That was all I got. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of helped. You know that look. You know, almost. I feel yeah. sorry for you, and no. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, we are also we are also proud that some of our games have been used in the school too, in high school. Oh. Yeah. Um, right. For, for example, uh, one of my scenario is called uh, Winds of Change, and it's uh, a, a tricky setting because it's like uh, a, a war, like a Balkan war, mixed with a, a fantasy, a fairy tale setting. Uh, so we can speak about uh, war and friendship in time of war and uh, so on with, uh, with a glass of, uh, of fantasy and, imag and imagination. And uh, some friend of mine uh, use it on uh, a, um, a point in, uh, I don't know, uh, it was a school, a school, uh, um, uh, a school uh, like a yeah. workshop. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. It was like a school workshop for high school, mm -hmm. and it was called I Respect. It was about uh, diversity. And yep. uh, the game is about uh, two kind of people uh, that from a moment to another became uh, strangers because someone else uh, say you are different, you are uh, these uh, people and you are uh, these people. And uh, so the game was used to speak about diversity, but it was not an educational game. I, I wrote it just for fun, for me and for my friends, but uh, uh, someone was able to use it for... Uh, for uh, education, yep. yeah. And yeah. Well, we've we've talked many times about the educational value of LARP. Um, and of course, Stewie's got, you know, with uh, has spoken to a few people who have actually almost made it part of the school curriculum, uh, yeah. you know, locally. Um, and, and I do agree. I think this is what's going to bring people out. And, you know, like you were saying, you can you can touch on some very, very political um, scenario situations that maybe have happened in the past to prove a point but almost sugarcoat a little bit. So it's a little bit easier to swallow. People can't get offended by it, but do understand the importance of, yeah. you know, how to deal. I think, I think we have lost that a little bit and that role play element of it and the learning how to talk to people about awkward situations. Yeah, um, exactly. Something that can be done via LARP. I mean, there's, there's absolutely no reason why it shouldn't. Right. Um, I think, I think it's about time that we plug the book one more time. What one do you reckon? Time, folks? I think yeah, please. Yeah. 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 So, you know, let's, let's, 
Ta da! Oh, wow. So, what's the book called again? And where can we look? Look at the thickness, you know. Oh, look at that! That's a thick book, isn't it? That's a book. <laughs> I mean, it is so vast. It's even got those little thumbnail things when the pages. Can you see that? Where all the sections oh, yeah. are? It's yeah, that big. Exactly. Can you see that? That's great. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that, the, that's um, value, isn't it? I'd pay a lot of money for that, wouldn't you, Stu? Exactly. So, how how do people find the book at the moment? It's up on Kickstarter, right? Yeah. yeah, the campaign is still going, so there's still time to donate if you want to contribute, of course. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. that's it. You mm. can see what we've put into it. So you can try our one of the games uh, in the style of a book, and uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, okay. So, uh, kick, so Kickstarter.com forward slash what? Uh, crescendo giocoso. Uh, it's uh, an Italian term. It's a musical term because uh, you know the, this whole chamber lap thing. Uh, we yeah, yeah. played on the analogy with music, and so yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll um, we'll definitely have a link to that uh, up in the show notes as well when uh, when. Uh, Rob, link when I Rob think if you want to copy it over. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. I've got it. Yeah, that's fine. Fantastic. Thank you very much for that, Rudger. Is it? It is Ruga. I mean, I'm saying that right, aren't I? Yeah, Ruga Fred. Okay. Um, I mean, fair, yeah. fair play. I mean, the, the, the thing is, she's showing those pictures, now, and, and I'll be trying to talk to Rob, and then all of a sudden I'll be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> just look at the book. So you have to forgive me, because then yeah. you show a picture, and I go, "Oh, that looks really interesting." But I don't know anyone else is looking at this. You know? All of a sudden, just seeing this face right in front of them. You know? uh, uh, yeah, no, definitely. Um, That's good. So, uh, so what's next on the cards for you guys? Mm. Hmm. <laughs> we are waiting for the next Cows League uh, games this summer. Yeah. This summer you know. Yeah, yeah. but we, we will try to do it. Then <laughs> ne next year, next year we will have. Um, I cannot assure one hundred percent, but more or less. Another international LARP in 2018. Oh, but good. for this year, we are we will run one more LARP. I hope for, for Italian players because yep. we any every year we used to have our official LARP August, and so we are working to make it happen this year. And last, uh, next year we will we will uh, surely try another international LARP. Mm -hmm. And because I think there is a lot of work to do in that direction, I know that the scene will be too crowded of international art because it is now is exploding. Okay. And, and, and I, I think we, we, you need to show your diversity. This is yeah. what LARP scene had to do to be a, an entire a, 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 a form of art. In 100% yeah. speaking, you need to show diversity because if you have the same logic, more or less, you know, I think it's like cinema. You know, the first movie was just entertaining and just, you know, um, in without colors and just one this kind of, of film. And after we have this enormous range, and I think we are expanding um, uh, LARP offer now. So, uh, and we need more and more of that. So, this is the reason why. We wrote a manifesto. We want to show what we can offer. And if you are in, just jump and come in Italy to play because we have this difference. And this difference is in our LARP as Chaos League and also in the book. So this is the reason yeah. why we we done this interview all together because we are different aspects of the same yeah, uh, yeah. subject. Yeah. And will you come back and let us know yeah. how it went next year? Come back and we'll do all this again and we'll have another chance. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Stuart's yeah. mic yeah. will be working at that stage. But yeah. Yeah, it's working have, it's fine on. It's working fine on Twitch, apparently. Okay, so we're gonna leave it with that. <laughs> 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 well, I'm just basking in this one, Stuart, because for once I'm not having the problem. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, the tradition has now been reversed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, it go, well, goes all, around, goes, comes around, around. It comes around, goes around. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, yeah, um, okay. Sounds so, very exciting, and I think because uh, we we're spending a fair a fair while abroad next year, I might come and uh, pop in and come and have a look and see what's okay. going on. You know, kind of come, come. visit you. Yeah. 
Yeah. Sounds, sounds like a plan to me. Smuggle me in yeah. the suitcase. All right, Luke? Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. We definitely, we always need baggage handlers. Edwards, yeah. That's <laughs> always I need them. That. That's no problem. <laughs> um, so, uh, well, thank you all very much for coming along. It has been, you know, a very, a very informative, uh, lots of questions answered, uh, an amazing book uh, that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the book, yeah, an, ama- an amazing book that will uh, allow you to run, you know, at the very minimum, twelve different chamber LARPs. Just pick a page, any page, you know, uh, and run one from there because it's all self-contained, ready to rock and roll. You need do yep. nothing other than read. So uh, yeah. you, you can't say right. fairer than that. If you ever wanted to get into either chamber LARP or LARP, this is the book for you. 100% hands down no questions asked um, sure you know. <laughs> it's a winner it's well uh, <laughs> winner winner chicken dinner <laughs> Uh, now, we do have some events that I found that are coming up in the UK. So if you guys are happy to hang around while I rattle these off, that's fine. If you need to disappear as well, right, I'm also fine with that. Not a problem. OK, so uh, here are the events that are coming up then. So we got uh, June the 2nd to June the 4th is Frail Realities. Uh, that is co- in uh, Consul Scout Camp um, in Stoke-on-Trent. Uh, again, on June 2nd or June the 4th is Lost and Found Episode 1. I mean, problem is anything Episode 1, if it goes in the Star Wars uh, genre, is never a good sign. But this isn't in the Star Wars genre, luckily. Uh, it's the road to nowhere. Uh, and at the moment, you can only actually sort of contact these people as they are venue to be confirmed. All this will be in the show notes. Again, another one happened on June the 2nd to June the the 4th. There seems to be a lot of competing ones going on here. Um, Is Erda Event 2 the infestation? Uh, Oh. Sounds a lot like the garden at the moment. Uh, Location is Giant Seat in Ringley Road West, Radcliffe, Manchester. Uh, June 17th, 2007. Uh, Now, we really must have a little crack at one of these uh, sometime, Luke and Rob. Uh, a single day adventure. Just oh. literally one day only, right? Uh, I, I, I'd recommend one of those because that one that would be common. And that's where I did the single day survival lap based on England after the Martian invasion. Ah, yeah. that's a great location. That single day was a lot of fun. So we should all of us go down to one, either by the Neo Hero Lodge or perhaps by uh, uh, the Four Star Agent team to both play down there. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, well, well, this one is by the Neo Hero Saga lot. Uh, location Woodbury Common, Woodbury Devon. Uh, and on June the 40th uh, through then to July the 2nd is Chrysalis from Ascendancy, Ascendancy LRP. Location is Candleston, Merthyr Mow Road. Uh, that's near Bridgend. Uh, you can find all of these, of course, over on larpevents.co.uk. Uh, it's a, got a fantastic searchable thing. And, and in fact, for any international listeners that are tuning in, America, Italy, uh, etc., <laughs> Um, you Newport. should n- Newport. Uh, you should yeah. actually uh, go to this site because he is looking to broaden the scope. I know it says LARPEvents.co.uk, yeah, but he is looking for people to put in international LARPs in there as well to broaden it because right now it's pretty much just UK based, and he really wants to get you know everybody starting to use it. So no matter where you are in the world. You know, you can look up a location and go, is there a LARP near me happening soon? So get across there and help that wonderful person out. Well, uh, cool. again, a massive, massive thank you to Maria, Kiera. I've said that, I've seen that wrong again, haven't I? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, thank you Al- Alessandro, awesome. Alessandro and Oscar. Um, I was actually trying to find a song. There was a song running through my head, but then I realized that it wasn't actually Alessandro. Uh, that it was Alejandro. Um, that's how old school I am. I was going to try and see if I can find that and just clip out that little bit of. That was uh, uh, was that Lady Gaga? I think it was Lady Gaga. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's pretty, pretty good. Thing. 
think because you know in their first interview let's not offend them so much <laughs> with Lady Gaga and then just trying to kind of you know make that assumption and make that link to them <laughs> you know um but I, I i almost got there but but not not quite uh, so, <laughs> so um right so Let's just uh, move on very quickly. So a big, I say, big thank you to all our guests. Fantastic! It was absolutely amazing having you all. You know, and uh, even including a small baby at some point. Um, and there was in fact a a, a dog that pretended to be uh, a, a dire hound once. Yeah, uh, and what have you? You know, uh, <laughs> it's all here. It's all happening. It's crazy time here. Um, <laughs> But I'd also like to say a massive thank you again to all of our lovely, lovely patrons who actually helped to make this show a bit easier to keep going. It helps for, to, for us to spend on the hosting of the podcast and things like that. And that does help us out a lot. So if you can... <laughs> Okay. Blue, Alessandro, Blue is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my son eating uh, dinner in the in the other room. Yeah, that really does. Yeah. So he's, well, he's absolutely adorable. I must be honest, he's fantastic. Um, so chaos, yeah. Yes, yeah. If you if you can help out, pop pop across to the the way with, with the, to, you know like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. now I'm gonna say is that your Wendy house or is that your little one's Wendy house? We need to clarify it's, this. It's thing. yours, Did isn't you it, Alessandro? That yeah, is yeah. yours, isn't it? It's where I live now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's my space in the house. Yeah. <laughs> All yours though. Yeah. So as I was saying, if you can, if, if you do want to help out the show, pop across to patreon.com forward slash lapbook and that really helps us. Just a dollar, dollar a month just really helps the show just do things a little bit better and, and pay for things. Um, get, new get, get new microphones, uh, etc. This is a new microphone, okay? It's fine on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's computer, though, is it? That's why I get, mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. get mm-hmm. dedicated mm-hmm. my entire mm-hmm. I bought an entire mm-hmm. 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 It's all I can do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So if you'd like to get in contact with the show, just email LARPbookshow at gmail.com. Is there a topic you would like us to discuss or something cool you saw or fancy writing an article for the website? Then just email the show, LARPbookshow at gmail.com. Right, music was provided by Ben Sound at bensound.com. As I said, pop across to the Patreon, help us out. Patreon.com, LARPbook. Uh, we do have a shop and it's now actually up on LARPbook.com. Uh, we've actually managed to get it up there and, and, and away from Redbubble, believe it or not. Uh, <laughs> you can listen to, the, to this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Twitch, uh, even Periscope uh, right now as well. Um, blah, 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 and Podbean, of course, just search for LARPbook. Right, you will find us. That's all you need to do. Uh, again, email, just email the show, larpbookshow at gmail.com. Visit the website, larpbook.com. News, reviews, and lots of really cool stuff up there. It's also where you'll find the show notes as well, by the way. Uh, and you can always follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Plus. Again, just for larpbook. That's all you need to do. And don't forget to give us a massive five-star review on whatever you use to listen to this. So, again, thank you very much. And that's been it from us. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye